There's a few ways to make shapes react automatically to sounds in After Effects, but what if you want to do it with your own cool custom artwork? In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make any kind of custom artwork react to any kind of dope beat. All right, so let's get into it. And let me give you a quick overview of the pieces that we are going to be using in this. And you can use anything you want. You can import a file from Photoshop or Illustrator and use your layers in that file. But I'm just gonna be using stuff that I made in After Effects, but this is really flexible. So for this, the pieces that we're going to be making are some footage, a little tunnel, a star field and a spinning cube. All right, so we got a new comp opened up. Now, the first thing that I want to do is drag in my audio track. This audio track is by Stream Beats, which is music you can use for free, which is very great because I will not get a DMCA strike down for this video, which I very much appreciate. I will link to this music. And the first thing I wanna do is right click this audio track and I wanna click Keyframe Assistant Convert Audio to Keyframes. And this will generate a new null object that if you open it up under the effects will have all of these channels, left channel, right channel, and both. And you open these up and you can check on these sliders. Now, hopefully your track has different values on each slider. As you can see on this track, if I scrub through it a little bit, I have some different properties. So if I just go to random keyframe, this one is 36.7, the right channel is 47.1, both is 41.9. It's not a big deal if you if you don't have different values on each um, track, but it will help you get a little bit of variation when you are linking different things to different channels. So now I'm gonna create my first layer that I wanna link to this stuff. So I'm just gonna paste in something. So I'm gonna paste in my little star field and all this is is just a few layers cc starburst some echo and some fill you can check out my warp speed video on how to make this um, cool if you want so all this does is just steadily moving with the 1.5 speed with the music i think that helps if it's just um, steadily moving but what i want to do is i want to link this phase to the beat right so maybe i'll say i want to link this to the right channel so let's open up this effect here and Let's grab this phase, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna pick whip this phase to, let's say, the right channel. And now, if I play this back, you can see that the pulse is now linked to that channel, and it's, it's pulsing with the beat. Pretty cool. And I think that this it has a kind of this nice piano that comes in right around here right there so i'll just have this layer fade in when that happens and it'll be kind of a nice little like highlight to that moment of the song all right so i have a piece of footage in here i'm going to go ahead and just drop this in and the first thing i want to do is i want to loop this footage so it extends to my whole duration so i'm going to right click in here in the project panel interpret the footage click main and i'll just say loop this 10 times that should be enough to just extend this all the way and now what i want to do is Right click on the footage, click time, enable time remapping. So now we have a stopwatch that we can link to another channel. Let's link this to, let's say the left channel. Now if we play this back, it's gonna be really crazy, okay? This is enough, right off the bat, this would give anybody a panic attack watching your visualizer. So we need to go, we need to add something to this expression to slow this down a lot. So if we drop down this, um, expression here or click double click E on the layer we will open up this expression and let's edit it so I'm gonna go ahead and just type over this right now time times two and what this is gonna do right now is this is just gonna play the footage back at double speed so right now we're just overriding the time remap and we're just telling this to play back at double speed and so now after this let's add plus and then a parentheses. And for anyone familiar 
with school. Maybe this is just an American thing. I don't know, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You'll know the order of operations, how parentheses work. It's going to do whatever math you put inside these parentheses is gonna happen first before the stuff outside the parentheses, right? Okay, so let's link. Now we have our little cursor in here. Let's link this to another slider. Let's say the left channel here. Boom, okay. But I wanna add a little something to the end of this because it's still gonna be really fast. So let's say divide this by, let's say 100, okay? And then close out this parenthesis like this. Now we should have something that looks like this. Our footage is obeying this, this whatever's happening with this slider divided by 100 and then playing at a speed of times two, okay? And I think it's pretty cool. And then I will just go ahead and add some a uh, color effects to it, a tint and some curves to kind of give it this cool inverted color look. Great. So now let's make that tunnel, that really cool looping tunnel. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste in this shape layer from my completed one. And let's go ahead and toggle on some of this stuff. I'll just show you real quick. If you get lost, go ahead and watch my infinite tunnel video so you can figure out how I made this. So all I did here was add a repeater to make this tunnel have depth. And then we are just gonna go ahead and loop this offset so that it loops infinitely in this tunnel, okay? Now we have a looping tunnel. Now we can just link any properties, like we said, link any properties to these channels. So maybe I wanna go ahead and add this scale to one of these sliders. So I can go ahead and add scale to, let's say both channels, why not? Now, if I see this, this to me, this looks like it's too too crazy, right? I don't really like the way that looks. I think that's like, that's way too much. So I could go in and add a little bit of math here. And if I open this up, you'll see this is adding a new expression. We have not seen this before. So what happens if I, let's say, divide this by six? Well, if I do that, now it's too small. So what I could say is divide it by six, but then but then add 50. So it's, it's gonna be at 50% around that. And then let's see what happens. Okay, well that's weird because it's not adding it at 50% proportionately. So how can we make it do that? Since the scale has two values here, we need to add this number as two values. So let's just mirror this temp temp that's in brackets with our 50. So we'll add brackets here and we'll add 50 comma 50 and then delete that other one. And then that should now make it scale proportionally. So we're telling it to divide this by six and then just add in 50% proportionally. And now we'll have something that looks like this. And I think now this little scale jump looks a lot cooler. It kind of looks like speakers bouncing. Now what we could also do to this is add some kind of color shift that's gonna happen. So if we add the effect color balance, HLS, we could add this to it, find it in our drop down here, and maybe link the color balance to both channels as well. We want the hue, link that, and then we will have something that looks like this. What we could also do is if we want this color to just change all the time, we could add a time times, I don't know, maybe time times 10 plus hour later expression. So now this color will just cycle the whole time while also being affected to the slider. And then if you want these color jumps to be even more extreme, you just add a little bit of math to the end of it. So then this slider amount times like three. So we're having a steady amount. So it's always cycling through this by 10 and then every jump is times by three. Cool, I like this. Heck, I could even do something weird like uh, maybe attach the amount of points that are happening here to one of these. So attach the amount of points to the left slider. Now whenever there's a really big jump in the music, this is really gonna change the amount of points that the shape has. And I think that really helps. So if I play this here, 
When the music really changes, it kind of jumps from a circle to a triangle, something like that. So you can get really weird with what's happening with your shapes. Now finally, let's get to this 3D cube. So I have a cube here. If I drop this in, it's a cube that I made out of a bunch of shape layers here that can just rotate in 3D space. If you want to learn more about how to make this, drop me a comment and I, I got and subscribe because I got something cool coming out soon. All right. So let me just go ahead and add a fill to this real quick. And, you know, the first thing I want to do here is probably just add like a steady rotation to all of these rotations here, the X, Y, and Z, just because I think that really helps always with the music. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch here and just type in time times, let's say 45. Okay. And I'll copy this expression and paste it on the Y and the Z. And now this will just kind of give it this nice like spin that's always going to happen like this. That's pretty cool already. And let's go ahead and link this scale to the music so that it can kind of just jump up and down. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab this scale and we'll just link this to, let's say, the right channel. Right channel sounds great. Now, if we open up this expression here, we're going to see another new expression we haven't seen before. This time we have three dimensions because we're working with a 3D object. So the expression is going to change according to that. So what if I wanted to do something to this so that it never gets like this small, right? This is so small, this cube down here. I don't like how small it looks. So what if I wanted to say I wanted to clamp the values so that it never gets, the cube never gets below a certain size or it never scales above a certain size. Can we add something called a clamp to it? Yes, we can. That's what we're gonna do right now. So if we click on this expression and we add a line to the middle here, we're gonna add a clamp expression, okay? So to do this, we're just gonna add a new line of code. We're gonna type in temp equals clamp, okay? Because we already have this temp defined, all right? Forgive me if I'm butchering this, but I'm trying to, trying to explain it in the way I understand. We already have this temp defined, so we don't need to rewrite that here. So we're just gonna say clamp, temp equals clamp, and then we need to define three values here. We already have our temp, which is this, so that's fine. And then we just need to say the low value, the, the most minimum value that you don't want it to go below. So let's say, I don't know, 25, it'll be 25%. And then a value that you don't want it to go above, maybe 65, like that. And then, oops, I got an error because I forgot to put a little um, semicolon after it to say that the line is finished. And then it'll look something like this. So now you can see this is clamped. It's not gonna go below 25 and it's not gonna go above 65. Cool. And so you could take this clamp expression and you can use it on any other layer. It doesn't just have to be this one in 3D space or on a scale. You can clamp any property. It's very useful. So yeah, these are the tricks that I got for you. I hope that uh, your visualizer is now bumping. All right. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. If you liked it, you're probably going to like these. But check them out, all right? I'll wait.